Hi there and welcome to Loopy Mabel Crochet. My name is Jane and in today's video it's a tutorial on how to make my latest design, the Woodland Walk Capelet. To start this tutorial can I just remind you that it will be in UK terms so when I refer to the stitches please be aware that I'm using the UK terms the stitches are exactly the same as the US stitches but we just call them a different a different term so just be aware of that I'm going to be using a five millimeter hook I'm going to be using drops lima yarn and this gorgeous lovely antique white but it's a double knit yarn so you can use any double knit yarn and you'll need approximately 300 grams. You'll need some scissors and some needles to sew in your end and if you're new to crochet I always say use your stitch markers and then you'll never lose your stitch on the end or beginning of a row. You can quite easily pause the video at any time, rewind and as many times as you need and if you ever need to ask me any questions you can always pop them in the comments box underneath the video. So let's begin. So we're going to start off and we're going to make our slip knot. So you just make your slip knot whichever way you're familiar with. I do have a tutorial on that if you need to refresh. And we're going to do a number of chains and the size that we're doing in the tutorial is to fit a medium size ladies shoulder measurements but there is a full pdf pattern with small medium large extra large that you can also refer to and i'll put the link for the pdf pattern in the description box below so let's begin so let's do a chain and we need to do a chain of 155 so yarn over pull through yarn over pull through yarn over pull through yarn over pull through so you need to continue on now until you've got 155 chains so pause this video and i shall see you when you've got 155 chains so we've now got 155 chains Okay, so I have 155 chains and we joined with Geordie today. Uh, so now what we need to do is we need to join the chain into form a ring. So we just need to run your finger all the way along the chain just to make sure you, your chain is not twisted. So if you just run your finger all the way along. To the end so we're just going to insert our hook into that very first chain that we did yarn over and slip stitch to form our ring so now we're going to chain one which does not count as a stitch and we're going to insert our hook into that first chain and yarn over and we're going to work a treble so insert your hook into that first chain and work your first treble or if you're watching from the US your first double crochet it's the exact same stitch but we just have a different term yarn over pull through yarn over pull through and we're just going to repeat this all the way along inserting your hook into that next chain yarn over pull through yarn over pull through yarn over pull through and again down into that next chain and work your treble Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So just continue all the way along your chain. So if you just, if I leave you now to continue all the way along working your trebles and I shall see you somewhere towards the end and I'll show you how we're going to finish off this first row. Okay, so I'm just towards the end. I've just got two more chains to work into with my trebles. So just finish off these last two, my last chain there. Okay. 
if you just want before we continue if you just want to make sure that your work is not twisted so it should be looking something like this nice and flat and there's no twists in it if you've got a twist in it you're going to have to start again and pull it out and make sure you've got no twists in it so if you're happy that you've got no twists in your work we're going to turn our work from now on we're not going to join our in a slip stitch we're going to turn our work and we're always going to chain one and turn so chain one and turn your work and down into that very first stitch insert your hook and work your treble so yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two and we're always going to do a treble at the beginning of our row and one treble at the end of our row so if you want to insert your stitch marker so you know exactly where that stitch is when you come back round and then we'll also put one at the end of this row when we come to that so now we're going to be working a series of rows using the basket weave pattern now it's a really simple pattern all it is is a treble again but we're either going to be working behind the post of the treble of the row below or in front of the post now when we say post this is your post your treble posts so we're either going to be working inserting our hook and from the front and inserting your hook from behind there so you're working it's front post because we're coming from the front always on the front of our work so you yarn over insert your hook under the post yarn over pull through and work your treble as normal when I say back post treble yarn over and come from the back over that post so that's what we're going to be doing and we're going to be working in blocks of three so let's start and I'll explain a bit more so yarn over and we're going to be working three front post trebles so yarn over coming down in the post of the following treble bring your hook from behind the post but you're working at the front of the work yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two so the only thing that you're doing differently is you're working around the post so we're doing three front post trebles so we've done one so again insert your hook under the post bring your yarn through and then just work your trebles as normal and we need to do one more pull the yarn through and then you've got your three front post trebles the next block we're going to do three back post trebles so yarn over bring your hook around the back of the work up and over that post catch the yarn bring it all the way through to the back yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two so we'll do that again so yarn over come around the back over that post yarn over pull through so it's at the back yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two and we'll do it again I'll just get a little bit closer zoom in a bit more for you so yarn over we're working this next post so we're coming round the back insert your hook over that post yarn over pull it through and keep going to the back don't be tempted to do this yarn over working over and come through to the front you must if you work on the back post you must come through from the back so you bring it through to the back then yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two so we now need to do three front post trebles so now working from the front of the post and just work your treble as normal from the front and one more and when you're working your I'll just show you how it's starting to look when you do a back post it creates 
a ridge from the back onto the front when you're doing your front post it leaves a treble as such but it just raises it slightly so you can see when you've done a back post because it does look different to those three that we did front post so let's do some more back posts again so we've just done our three front post trebles so we're going to do three back posts so we're going to come back over bring the yarn right the way through and remain at the back yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two let's do that again from the back over that post yarn over bring it all the way to the back and one more like so and we're just going to continue like this all the way along working three front post trebles like so or working three back post trebles last one So if I leave you to continue working all the way along, working three front post trebles and three back post trebles all the way along, and I shall see you somewhere towards the end, and we will be finishing on three front post trebles and a treble. We're always going to finish on what we started, so it keeps our capelet nice and even with the same pattern on both sides of the capelet, because we're now going to be working separate now the capelet so it's opened up in the middle so whatever we start with we're always going to have a treble at the front we're always going to end with a treble on the last stitch and we're always going to have whatever if we do three front posts at the beginning we will end with three front posts at the end if we start with three back if we start with three back posts at the beginning we will end with three back posts so Leave you now, pause the video, working all the way along, doing your sets of three, and I shall see you somewhere round about here to finish off this row. Okay, so I'm just at the end of this row. So I've just got three front post trebles to do, and then my last one, just there, where we're gonna finish with our treble. So let's just finish our three front posts. One. two and three and then right at the very end I've got my last one which I'm just going to insert my hook should have put a stitch marker in sorry but we will on the next row you're just going to finish off with your treble so we're always going to finish off on a treble. So that's our first row of basket weave. So we're going to chain one and turn. And down into that first stitch, we're going to work our treble. Always chain one, turn and work your treble. Let's insert our stitch marker. So we know it's there on the end of the row. And we're going to work back post trebles for the next three so working from the back and again and the last one always working in threes so now we're going to work through the front post for the next three And the last one and then we're going to work through the back three back post trebles I'm just going to repeat this all the way to the end working th three back post trebles then three front
and you can see the basket weave pattern starting to form. So now we're going to work our back post travels. And then move on to our three front post travels. So if I leave you to pause the video, continue all the way to the end of the row, working your three front post trebles and then your three back post trebles and I shall see you somewhere towards the stitch marker and then we'll finish off this row. Okay, so I've just got my last three uh, back post trebles to do and then my last treble. So let's just finish them off. And this will complete row two of our basket weave. And we're just going to finish off in our last stitch because we've got our stitch marker. So we know exactly where we're going to insert our hook. So let's just remove our stitch marker. And we're going to insert our hook into that stitch there. So yarn over, insert your hook and finish off with your treble. So that completes row two of our basket weave. I'm not going to count the first row of trebles. So we've done two rows of basket weave. And all we're going to do is repeat these rows. So if when we did the first row, we started off with a front post. Then we turned our work and we worked a back post. So we're going to turn our work again and work a back post. And then we're going to turn our work and work a front post. So really what we're going to be doing is front post to start with, the next row back post to start with, next row back post to start with and the next row front post. So it's going to be front, back, back, front over four rows. So we're just going to continue with those four rows. So it was front post to start the row, then it was back post to start the row, the next row will be back post to start the row and the row after that will be front post to start the row. So it'll be front, back, back, front over four rows. So it'll be front, back, back, front. So continue working those four rows. I will see you back here when we have worked 10 rows of basket weave, 10 rows of basket weave, and I shall see you somewhere towards the end of that 10th row. Okay, so I've completed my 10 rows of basket weave and your work should look something like this. And just give you a quick measurement. And we're looking at roughly nine centimetres. So now it's really simple from here on in. All we're going to do is chain one and turn like we always do on every row. And work our double crochet into that first stitch. And we're just going to work double crochet in every stitch along. So we're going to work 12 rows of treble and when we have finished our 12 rows of treble then we're going to continue on with 10 more rows of our basket weave. So if you continue to do your 12 rows of trebles then work your 10 rows of your basket and I shall see you somewhere towards the end of our 10 rows of our basket and then we'll finish off the edging and work our ribbing. Okay, so I'm just at the end of my last row. So I'm just going to finish off these last three front post trebles. And I'm just going to finish off with my very last treble on the end. And that concludes the end of the basket weave and all we're going to do is cut the yarn and just tie it off and now we're going to pick up and do two rows of half treble all the way around. I'm just going to attach my yarn to the base of the capelet and I'm just going to 
attach it to the middle bit at the back. And I'm just going to insert my hook and just pull the yarn through. And I'm just going to secure it with a knot. I'm just going to insert my hook back in, pull the yarn through, chain one, which does not count as a stitch. And we're going to go back down into that same stitch and work a half treble or a half double crochet. If you're watching from the US, just insert my stitch marker so we know where our first stitch was when we come all the way back around. And I'm going to work over my end as well. And I'm just going to work into every stitch along the bottom, work in half trebles. So a half treble, if you're not sure, is yarn over, insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over, pull through, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all three. And that is your half treble. I'm just going to continue like this, working half trebles. So if you want to work all the way along from where you picked up the centre part of the back of the capelet and I shall see you somewhere towards the corner where we're going to turn and I'll just explain what you need to do when you get to the corner. So if you want to pause the video and I shall see you somewhere round about here towards our first corner of the capelet, the bottom of our capelet. Okay, so I'm just coming to that first corner there. So all you need to do is work up to that first corner with your half trebles. And the last stitch there. And in the last stitch, we're going to work three half trebles. Just working over that tail. So work three in the same stitch. And that creates a corner for you to continue around. And that's why you do three in the corner part of the capelet. So when you come to the next corner on the other side, you would do exactly the same, work three half trebles into that last stitch. And then now we're working up the sides and we're going to work all the way up the sides to the join of the neck. Now obviously we haven't got stitches as such to work into. So rule of thumb, you normally, when you've got a treble, you normally work two stitches along each treble. So I'm just going to insert our hook into the next space and you just really pick up your stitches evenly along so not too many if you pick up too many then your edge of your capelet will be a little bit ruffled and if you pick up too few obviously it will make the edge of your capelet a little bit puckered so not too many not too few so we'll do a few more and let you can just see how I move along so I'm not stretching too far across and I'm not going in too close. I'm just yarn over, then down into the next spot. Yarn over, down into the next spot. So if I leave you to work all the way up the side, working your half trebles evenly along, your work should be nice and flat. So pause the video and work half trebles all the way along and I shall see you somewhere towards the join part at the neck. We'll go from there. Okay, so I'm just coming up to the join, the middle part of our capelet there and just move down onto the next side as you did before. We're not going to be doing three treble, um, we're not going to be doing three half trebles into that spot because we don't want to create too many and then work all the way down the other side with our half trebles just evenly just evenly picking up your stitches and once you've done this row the next row will be a lot easier because you've got your stitches then you can just put your half trebles into so if you want to pause the video and work all the way down to the next corner when you come to that next corner 
don't forget to do three half trebles into that corner stitch before you then go around the other side and continue on until you come to your stitch marker so if you want to pause the video continue working your half trebles and I shall see you somewhere towards our stitch marker for our first round okay so I've just got a few more to do come to the stitch marker here we go so we just need to take our stitch marker out and slip stitch to the top of that first half treble that we did and all we're going to do is do another round exactly the same of half treble so chain one which does not count as a stitch yarn over down to that same stitch yarn over pull through yarn over pull through all three for your half treble and then if it helps pop your stitch marker in and then you know where you're going to come back to and you're going to slip stitch to that stitch and all you're going to do is work all the way around with your half trebles all the way around the sides when you come to your corner you do your three half trebles into the corner one and then obviously you've got your stitches now to work up along the side so you just work your half trebles in all the stitches all the way around when you come to the next corner add your three trebles in that corner stitch and then work all the way around come back to your stitch marker and just slip stitch to finish off this that round and then cut your yarn and tie off and then sew in your ends once you've done all that pause the video once you've done all that I shall then come back and we'll show you how to do the neck ribbon and then okay it will be done Okay, so now we're going to work on the top part, the ribbon part of the neckline. So I'm just going to attach my yarn at the back. So the join is at the back. So just, just turn our work. So we've got the back, top of the back facing us. And we're going to be working into the unused part of the chain that we did right at the very beginning. And this is the unused part of the chain so we're going to be working in to those stitches there so I'm just going to bring my yarn through I'm just tying a knot to secure it and we're going to be reducing the width of the neck by half so we're going to be skipping a stitch so let's just do our first chain one which does not count as a stitch back down into that first stitch and work a double crochet. We're going to skip the next one, go down into the next and work a double crochet. Skip, go down into the next and work a double crochet. Or obviously if you're watching from the US it will be single crochet. Exact same stitch though. Skip the next, down into the next, double crochet. Skip, insert your hook into the next and double crochet. So we're going to do this all the way around, skip a stitch, double crochet, skip the stitch, double crochet. So if you pause the video, work all the way around and I shall see you somewhere towards around about here and we'll finish off and then we'll go on to the ribbing. Okay, so I've picked up my stitches and skipped a stitch and double crocheted and I've got 78 stitches and you need an even number. So make sure before we continue on to the next round that you have an even number so I've got 78 stitches which is roughly half of what we started out with and we're just going to slip stitch to the top of that first stitch and we're going to be doing a row of trebles to start with so yarn over insert your hook into that same stitch yarn over pull through yarn over pull through yarn over pull through let's put our stitch marker in and we're just going to work trebles all the way around like so so if you want to pause the video and work your trebles in every stitch all the way around and I shall see you somewhere around about here before we get back to the stitch marker and then we will do our next row of ribbing okay so I'm just coming to the last few stitches on this round this treble round so let's just finish them off I'm just going to slip stitch to the first stitch like 
jigsaw. And now we're going to work a few rounds of trebles, but we're going to work through the front post or the back post. So we're going to chain one and that doesn't count as a stitch. So we're going to yarn over and we're going to work around this post below. So yarn over and work your first treble. Insert your stitch marker. And in the next post, we're going to work from the back. So we're going to do a back post. And the next, we're going to be doing a front post. And the next, we'll come round and do a back post treble. And then the next, a front post. I'm just going to repeat this all the way along. Front post, then back post treble. And that's why you need an even number of stitches. So when you come towards the end, you should be finishing on a back post treble. And then we're going to slip stitch to the top of that first stitch. So if you want to pause the video, work your way around, working alternate back post treble. And then front post treble. Pause the video and I shall see you somewhere around about here. So I'm just coming to the first end of the first row there and I've just done a front post treble and I'm just going to finish off my last one which should be a back post treble. So you should also be finishing on a back post treble and it brings us back to the first stitch. We've got our stitch marker. So we're just going to remove our stitch marker and slip stitch to the top of that first stitch that we did. And again, we're just going to repeat what we've just done. So chain one, which doesn't count as a stitch, working around the post, insert your hook and front post treble. So whenever you've done a front post treble, the row below, you do the front post treble of the next row. Same with the back post. So you're just now following the stitches. So if it was front, you would be front, back, you would do back like this all the way around and you're going to do this for a total of four rows so you're going to do this for four rows exactly the same so you work your front post treble and your back post treble all the way you come to oops i should have put the stitch marker in let's pop that in first stitch so you come all the way around you should always finish on a back post treble then you slip stitch to the top of the first stitch and then you do the same again chain one which doesn't count as a stitch then you do your first treble around the front post and then you do the next one around the back front back front all the way around slip stitch to the top of the first one for a total of four rows so your ribbon it should be four rows so if i leave you to continue on and i shall see you somewhere towards the end of that fourth row of our ribbing okay so i'm just coming to the last few stitches of the ribbon so i've just got a front post treble to do and finish with my last back post treble there. I'm just going to slip stitch to the top of that first stitch, remove our stitch marker, insert your hook into the top of that first stitch we did and just slip stitch closed and that completes your neck ribbon so we're just going to trim the yarn, pull it through and all that's left to do now is to sew in our ends and we will have completed our capelet. So, hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please don't forget to give me that lovely thumbs up. It really makes my day. And if you're new to the channel, hello, welcome. And please subscribe if you like all my crochet designs and all my free tutorials. I'm wearing what we've made in the tutorial. In this lovely winter white, I've added one of my ragged brooches and there is a tutorial for that up on my dressmaking channel. I'll put the link for that up there if you'd like to make one. And I've also got another one that I've made in this lovely biscuit colour. And again, I've added one of my ragged brooches. I just think it finishes it off just so. But you don't have to. You can wear it without the brooch at the front and i really love it and especially this white one i did choose the white yarn again because i'm quite aware of when i make things that they have to go and complement the wardrobe so it's no point in making them if they're not going to complement your wardrobe or you're not going to get them worn 
Uh, so this is going to be a great colour to mix and match. But also, wouldn't this make a fabulous wedding capelet for the bride if it was an autumn, winter wedding? Or you could even do them in the colours of the wedding for your bridesmaids. How fabulous would they look wearing these? I'll pop some pictures up of me wearing the capelet just to give you a bit more of an idea. And I've got both pictures of them both. Just to give you an idea of how you can change your outfits purely by choosing the yarns that you choose for your crochet. I've got lots more tutorials coming, loads of designs. My design book is this thick. I don't think I'll ever run out of designs. They pop in my head, I do a little sketch, and then from that sketch, I spend a couple of weeks trying to get it from the paper into reality. So I hope you enjoy what I make. And if you do get any questions or you get stuck at all with anything in this tutorial or any of my tutorials, just pop a little note in the comments box below and I will get back to you and I'll try and help you. And I also, I love reading your comments, so please let me know what you think of this um, design and what colour would you choose. But until the next time, thank you so much for joining me today. And as I always say, practice makes perfect and I shall see you on the next crochet tutorial. Please take care and happy crochet.